Hello, Matthew. Um, this is a first series of quadrilaterals, um, and we're going to work with parallelograms first. All right, so the, before we move um, to examples, we're going to talk about the properties. Now, in a parallelogram, what you have to understand is there are several properties that you guys have to know, okay? First one is that opposite sides are parallel. So I can mark this with arrows saying these sides are parallel, and I can mark here with two arrows saying that these are parallel. We also know opposite sides are congruent. So right away I know that is congruent to that. Then in addition, I know this is congruent to this. Now, we do know opposite angles are congruent, so these opposite angles would be congruent. These opposite angles would be congruent. But when we look at the adjacent angles, these are, if we're going around the parallelogram, these adjacent angles are supplementary, meaning they add up to 180. I could also say that this angle and this angle would add up to 180. Those are all adjacent angles. Now, um, we also know if we construct the diagonals. So there's one diagonal. There's another diagonal. In a parallelogram, these diagonals bisect each other, which means this is the midpoint of both segments, and these would be congruent, and these would be congruent. So let's apply these properties to some examples real quick. So find the me measure of angle S, T, and W. Well, right away, the easiest one to find the measure of is the opposite angle, which would be this one here. So angle T is just going to be 112 degrees because it's opposite angle R. So how would I find angle S then? Remember, these are adjacent angles. So angle S plus angle R have to add up to 180. So if R is 112, angle S plus 112 equals 180. All I'm going to do is subtract to find angle S is 68 degrees. Now if angle eight is, or S is 68 degrees, then these are opposite angles, so angle W is 68 degrees. Okay, next one. Right? Find the value of x in the parallelogram, then find qr and ps. Well, when you look at these, what do we know about these? These are opposite sides of a parallelogram. What do we know about the opposite sides of a parallelogram? They are congruent. So if this is congruent to this, all we're going to do is set those measures equal to each other. And right away, I can add 15 to both sides, subtract 2x, and I would get x is equal to 3 plus 15 is 18. And now if I wanted to find the measure of the sides, I just come substitute 18 in for x. 36 plus 3, this would be 39, which would make this 39. Okay. So find y in the parallelogram and the measure of each of these angles, right? So these expressions are part of angle measures. And what angles are given to us? The opposite. What do we know about opposite angles of a parallelogram? They are congruent. So all we're going to do is take the measures and set them equal to each other. When I subtract 3y and then I subtract 4, and basically going and solving for y. So 3y is equal to 33. And now when I divide by 3, y is equal to 11. Now to find the angles. Here, I'm going to do 6 times 11 plus 4, which gives me 66 plus 4, which gives you 70 degrees. Right away, what is g going to be then? 70. But how do I find f and h? Well, to remember, these angles are supplementary. So angle F is 180 minus 70, which is 110. And by opposite angles are congruent, angle H is 110. Now here, <clears throat> find the value of the variables. When I look at Y, 
y, the y expressions basically give me these pieces of the diagonals. The x expressions give me these pieces of the diagonal. Well, what property do we know about the diagonals of a parallelogram? That they bisect each other. So these blue segments are congruent, and then these green segments are congruent. So to find y, I'm just going to set those blue segments congruent to each other or equal to each other. When I solve, subtract 4y, subtract 1, we get 4, or sorry, 2y is equal to 8, which means y is equal to 4. Now the next one, diagonals bisect each other, so those are congruent. So 2x minus 5 equals x plus 7. Subtract x, add 5, and you get x is equal to 12. All right. So this is the parallelogram section. Go ahead, attempt the homework, and let me know if you have any questions.